In this video, I'm going to revisit a topic that I talked about in the past. In the past, I made a video called Sticking Spinners in General Relativity, where I explained how to derive the curved Dirac equation and how to couple spinners to the gravity field, despite the fact that there are no finite dimensional spinorial representations of the general covariance group. And there was nothing factually wrong with this video, but I thought the quality could be better. And it's an important video. So what I'm going to do is make a new version. The basic idea of sticking spinners in general relativity is that you can circumvent this problem of there not being a finite dimensional spinorial representation of the general covariance group by sticking flat Lorentz spinners in the tangent space. Because you're dealing with Lorentzian manifolds, the tangent spaces are going to be Minkowski space, and Minkowski space is Lorentz isometric, and the Lorentz group does have finite dimensional spinorial representation. So you can just stick Lorentz spinners in the tangent space at every point on the manifold the so-called local Lorentz frame. So really the key is just to stick the spinners in the local Lorentz frame and that bypasses the problem of there not being an obvious way to stick spinners in general relativity. So here follows the math section where I actually explain how to do that. It's, it's somewhat intricate, it turns out. There are no finite dimensional spinorial representations of the gravitational gauge group GL4. This is a problem because it is therefore not obvious how to introduce spinners into general relativity, which is necessary for quantum quantum gravity, on account of the fact that it would be difficult to make a phenomenologically sensible quantum gravity theory that does not include spinners coupled to the gravity field. The solution to this problem is as follows. Consider only one single point on a curved manifold. At exactly just this point, the manifold is exactly approximated by its tangent space at that point. Also, if one is using a Lorentzian curved metric, the tangent space at every point will be Minkowski space. One can then define a field at this point on the curved manifold that is a scalar under GL4 in the curved manifold, but a spinner under O31 in the tangent space, since the curved manifold at this point and the tangent space at this point are identical, one has just constructed a Lorentz spinner at one point on a curved manifold. One can then construct such an object at any point on the curved manifold. However, each point on the curved manifold has its own independent tangent space in which it can transform under an arbitrary Lorentz group transformation. Therefore, to simultaneously define a Lorentz spinner at all points on the curved manifold, one must let it transform under local Lorentz transformations so that it can transform independently under an arbitrary Lorentz transformation in each independent tangent space at each point. Therefore, the first step to incorporating Lorentz spinners into GR is to construct an O31 gauge theory for spinners where spinners here transform into the Lorentz group via the same transformation as they usually do, except the parameters are now allowed to vary with space and time. We have the Lagrangian here, where we've got this gauge covariant derivative with this gauge field and these generators. Specifically, the generators are these matrices times one of these factors of a half over here, where A and B are the O31 isospin indices. However, the story is not complete. This is the necessary spinorial O31 gauge theory, but to turn it into a theory that defines a Lorentz spinner in the tangent space at every point on an arbitrary curved manifold, one must interpret the elements of this theory in terms of curved manifolds and their associated flat tangent spaces. Specifically, one must mathematically identify the space of O31 gauge transformations with the set of Lorentz transformations on the spaces tangent to the curved manifold at each point. The obvious consequence is that the isospin indices are interpreted as flat tangent space vector Lorentz indices, and one must interpret the Greek vector index as a curved space tensor index. Also, as stated above, one must take the spinner to transform as a scalar in the curved manifold under GL4, but a Lorentz spinner in the local tangent space under O31. Inspection of the above Lagrangian density shows that if these steps are mathematically implemented, the Lagrangian density would transform like a GL4 and tangent space O31 scalar. Therefore, the only remaining step would be to multiply the Lagrangian density by a factor of root negative g, where g is the determinant of the metric, to make the Lagrangian density transform like a scalar density so that the action is GL4 invariant. Thus, one would arrive at a theory that has a GL4 invariant action and includes the Lorentz spinner defined at every point. 
to identify the space of O31 gauge transformations with the space tangent to the manifold at each point, one must do three separate things. First, as stated above, one must identify the O31 isospin indices with the tangent space Lorentz vector indices, meaning that they are now interpreted as tangent space Lorentz indices. Second, one must find a way to define an independent set of gamma matrices at each point on the curved manifold which act in the tangent space at that point. And third, one must find a way to relate the spin connection to the geometry of the curved manifold such that a tangent space Lorentz transformation under which the theory must be invariant simply translates to an O31 gauge transformation on the spinner field under which it is already invariant. The first task is easy to take care of. One simply takes the isospin indices to be flat Lorentz vector indices. The other two tasks are not so trivial. It turns out that the first step towards tackling both of them is to introduce a new field that behaves much like a shift tensor, but instead of relating the metric of an embedded manifold with the metric of the space in which the object is embedded, it relates the curved metric with the tangent space metric. It is called the tetrad. From the definition just given in words, one can conclude these relations. Naturally, we have that they shift the indices of the flat tangent space metric to yield the curved metric, and that you can raise and lower the corresponding flat and curved indices on the tetrad with the corresponding metric. This uniquely determines the tetrad in terms of the curved metric and vice versa. Now we are in the position to handle the gamma matrix problem. The gamma matrices, as they are typically defined by the Dirac-Clifford algebra that they satisfy, carry a flat Lorentz vector index. The problem here is that each point on the curved manifold carries an independent flat Lorentzian tangent space. What is needed, therefore, is a set of matrix-valued functions of the coordinates on the curved manifold that evaluate to the correct gamma matrices for the tangent space at that point. The way to find the values of these matrix functions is to curve the Dirac-Clifford algebra. If one defines a new set of gamma matrices that anti-commute to yield the curved metric, then one has a Clifford algebra that evaluates to the flat Clifford algebra corresponding to the flat space that lies tangent to the specific point on the curved manifold at which the curved algebra was evaluated. This is because a specific point on the curved manifold and its associated tangent space are identical at that point. One can then solve the curved Clifford algebra for gamma matrix functions that act in the tangent space properly at each point on the manifold. So the curved Dirac Clifford algebra is just this as described. The tetrad is relevant here because the solution to this anti-commutation relation can be simply written in terms of the ordinary flat gamma matrices using the tetrad. We see that if we write this particular value for the curved gamma matrices, we get the right answer. These new gamma matrices are fittingly called the curved gamma matrices. This finally fulfills the second requirement. Now on to the third and final key task, which is to write the spin connection in terms of the geometry of the curved manifold so that the tangent space Lorentz transformations under which the theory must be invariant simply translate to O31 gauge transformations under which it is already invariant. It is not immediately obvious how to do this. The answer, it turns out, is given to us by the metronilic property. First, as mentioned above, given the form of the gauge covariant derivative and the nature of the field theory we are trying to build, we are forced to interpret the non-isospin index on the spin connection as a curved vector index. With this, if one considers how the curved indices transform, how the flat Lorentz vector indices transform under local Lorentz transformations, and how the tetrad is related to the curved metric, one finds that the metronilic property implies this. Solving this for the spin connection simply gives this right here. Given the symmetries of the spin connection, there are just enough equations to solve for it in terms of the tetrad. With this formula, the third requirement is fulfilled. Therefore, the generally covariant Dirac action coupled to general relativity is simply this, or rather this is the Lagrangian density, not technically the action, but whatever with these equations of motion, where this gauged covariant derivative is defined as it was given above, where the spin connection is given by this in terms of the tetrad. So now you have actually seen all the mathematical technical details of sticking spinners into general relativity. You've seen exactly what it means to stick spinners in the local Lorentz frame, and you've seen exactly what technical details really are involved in doing that. You've seen the complete formalism, I hope this helped you understand general relativity and field theory and possibly applications in quantum gravity a little bit better. I hope it helped you love field theory more. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Dietrich out.